Okay, in this video, I would like to tell you about Coulomb's Law, the principle of superposition, the definition of electric field, and um, how you find the electric field due to a point charge. Okay, so um, I know you've already been introduced to Coulomb's Law, but just um, let's take a look at this. So these, we already know that two positive charges repel one another. Let's say that this charge is Q1. That's how we designate a charge. It's Q. We designate a mass with M. We designate charge with Q. Um, and they're a distance D apart. Now, um, so what Coulomb's law says then is if you want to know the magnitude of the force on, um, w of 1 on 2, the electric force of 1 on 2, just the magnitude, it's just going to equal um, a constant called Coulomb's constant, K. In your calculators, that's C sub C, but, it, but here we use K. So it's going to be K times uh, the magnitude of Q1 times the magnitude of Q2 all over um, R square, D squared. So we'll just do magnitudes. So it's the magnitude of Q1 times the magnitude of Q2 all over D squared. Now K, a couple things here, K is a constant. You might want to write this down. It's about 9 times 10 to the 9th. And let's see what the units would have to be. Let's see, I have to end up with force, newtons, and newtons. And so this is coulombs, coulombs, and meters squared. So K better be um, newtons meters squared over coulomb squared see if that works out when we take k which is this see if these units when you multiply them by q1 and q2 that would cancel these out divided by the distance squared that would cancel the meters squared and sure enough you're left with newton so yeah that works okay that's coulomb's law um, that is going to tell us the magnitude of the force and in this, in what we're going to do is we're just going to um, know the direction by knowing that that um, the positives re will repel other positives. Like charges repel, opposite charges attract. One other thing, this might be the force of one on two, but it's also the force of two on one, because that's uh, Newton's third law: object A acts on object B, object B acts with the same force on object A. So that's Coulomb's law, or that's Newton's third law that says that if you flip-flop these, you get the same magnitude of force, always. Okay, I'd like to tell you about the principle of superposition now. Um, principle of superposition is um, when you have more than one, more than um, two charges, if you want to know, let's say you have a positive Q1, um, a negative Q2, a positive Q3, and a positive Q4. And let's say you'd like to know, how much force is Q4 going to have on it? Well, the principle of superposition says, first find the force just due to this guy. Don't worry about these other ones. Just pretend like it's just this. Get that force. That's going to be this way because it's repelling. And then um, if you want to know the force just due to this guy, ignore these two. So that one would be um, straight up because it's also positive. And then um, you have one more force, and that would be the force due, if I get rid of these, it's just as though it were just that guy and only that guy. So that's the force due to Q2. And so since they're opposites, we'll go like that. Um, how do you get these forces? With Coulomb's Law, you got to apply Coulomb's Law three different times. And then, um, then when you get all done with that, you got to add them like they're vectors. So you might break it into X and Y um, components, all three of them, add all the X's up, then add all the Y's up, and that will give you the, the force, uh, the, the electric force on Q4. So that's how you do that. They're kind of long problems, but they're, they're not hard problems. They're just long to do. Okay. I'd like to talk to you about the definition of an electric field. Let's say in this region right here, on the left here, we'd like to know if there's an electric field there. So what we do is we take a test charge. Now the test charge, by definition, is positive, always. So 
any test charge is positive. To say a positive test charge is kind of being redundant because test charges are always positive. Okay, but I'm going to do that all the time. I'm going to talk about a positive test charge, but I am being redundant when I say that. Okay, so let me see what which way the field is here. I take and put a positive test charge here. And let's say it zips this way. It zips that way. Well, then the field right at that point is that way. Um, if I put a positive test charge here, if it zips this way, then the field is, is indeed again to the right. Let's say that um, I drew some field lines. Field lines show you the direction a positive test charge will be pushed. And let's say that I drew them like this. Well, that's telling you that if you put a charge here, it's going to zip that way. Now, um, the electric field is a vector, so it, it has both a magnitude and a direction. Now, the, the direction is to the right. But how about the size of the electric field? What is the size of the electric field? Well, the size of the electric field, we're going to use an E for that. And if we're just talking about the size of it, I'm going to talk about the magnitude of it. That's going to be defined as uh, the force that, that this test charge experiences. So it's the force on the test charge. divided by the actual charge of the test charge. It should be independent of the charge, shouldn't it? It shouldn't depend on how much charge I put there. Just like the gravitational field, there is a gravitational field here. Let me show you. If I take this pen and drop it, yeah, the field is downward. And that field doesn't depend on this pen. The field, even when I take the pen away, the field is down. And it doesn't, it's 9.8 newtons per kilogram. 9.8 newtons per kilogram, it doesn't depend on what mass I put here, as long as it's small. Okay, so um, if you look, the units for this then, the units for electric field, it's going to be, um, it's going to be in the units for it are going to be newtons per coulomb. So if I told you that the field was 2 newtons per coulomb, that means... Uh, there will be two newtons of force for every coulomb you put there. Placed at that point, wherever, whatever point we're talking about. Okay, so that's the definition of the electric field. Now, there are all sorts of electric fields from all, all sorts of things, but one of the, the big ones is the electric field due to a point charge. So the electric field due to this point charge, Q1, first of all, let's see if this is positive, a positive uh, charge, Q1. If I were to put a test charge right here, you know which way it would be pushed? That's right, it would be pushed this way. Okay, so that's my test charge, that's Q test. And so um, the field is to the right. Actually, it's radially outward. If I, could drew the, if I drew the field lines, it'd be radially outward. But right here, it's to the right. And if I wanted to know how big that field was right there, a distance, say, um, d away, then um, I would just use my equation. The electric field's strength is just going to be the force on the test charge divided by the test charge. So let's see, the field would be, the strength of the field is going to be the charge on the test charge. That's going to be Q, or K rather, Q1, Q test, all over D squared. That's Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law only applies for four point charges. Divided by Q test. Guess that equal sign should be here more. Anyways, the Q test disappears, it cancels out. So the electric field due to a point charge is gonna be just K, Q1, all over uh, D squared or R squared. That's how you find the electric field due to a point charge. Thank you.